Hey, it's Rick with Techspin, and we're at the Taipei Game Show 2019. Let's start off with the Sega booth. They're showing off a few games here, including their new Team Sonic Racing, which is available on PS4 and Switch. Of course, with a game show, companies go a little further to help advertise their new products. Taiwan-based game publisher Game Dreamer, along with Kadokawa, Sega, and 91 Act, show off their new game, Dengeki Bunko, Crossing Void. It's a turn-based RPG where you collect over 25 characters from novels such as Sorter Online, Toradora, A Certain Magical Index, and more, with link skills that increase damage, and it's only available in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau, I believe. Staff from Sega's Tokyo office were on hand and really friendly. And with Revolve 8 in the background, we move on to more of the show. Next booth up is for Black Desert Mobile, an online game made from the PC version for both iOS and Android devices. Popular in over 150 countries, it spread to the mobile sector and gameplay looks smooth and rich. For me, it has a bit of a Witcher 3 kind of feeling and is pretty detailed. This massive mob was all inside the PlayStation booth, so we decided to head over there and check it out next. They had a bunch of playable demo games, and this is the first time I saw NBA Playgrounds 2, which looks like an easy to pick up, fun b-ball title with 2 vs 2 player action. There's a season mode, which is a trimmed down 14 game plus best of 3 playoffs, and lots of over the top moves similar to NBA Jam. For those wanting a little less cartoony, more realistic feeling, NBA 2K19 has that covered, with really sharp graphics and great gameplay. Capcom remade the 1998 classic horror game Resident Evil 2, also known as Biohazard, in Asia. Leon and Claire are locked and loaded, and ready to take on undead monsters in Raccoon City. Some gameplay presentation is attracting a lot of attention. It was super crowded, but pretty fun in the Sony booth. You can see Days Gone in the back there, and we'll get there in a bit. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is an RPG game remastered from the PS3 and Vita original for worldwide release. Looks interesting and a bit similar to Sword Art Online, which I really liked. Hardware was on display also, with Sony's VR headset and camera, the PlayStation Classic, and white versions of the PS4 Pro console with controller and several flavors including a camo and red controller and PS4 slim models. Days Gone had a small but cool storefront with a live actor who took his role pretty seriously, liking the motorcycle prop here. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, published by Activision, is coming out March 22nd, 2019 and promises to push the limits of your PS4 with awesome Shinobi Ninja gameplay set in feudal Japan. A third-person action-adventure, instead of HP, you have to unbalance enemies in order to deliver a killing blow. Black Desert Online was running the third arena of Arsha Championship, and contestants were battling in the finals here. Across from this, the Division 2 was a big part of the huge Ubisoft booth. Let's check it out. Starlink Battle for Atlas is out for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. And the music you hear is from Just Dance 2019, where you could step up and dance with others on the stage. With an arcade feel and visuals reminiscent of No Man's Sky, though based in one solar system with more storyline, Starlink is something I want to try out. Xbox One, PS4, and Switch all have controller add-ons with a Toys to Life feature, although you can go the all-digital route too. The guy on the right is doing a mission to find some ore. Here's the switch controller, and the pilot, ship, and guns fit onto the controller. And here he's changing a weapon, and then it's realized in-game. That's really cool. If you pick the Nintendo version, an added bonus of course is the addition of Star Fox and the cast from that game, which make up a huge part of the storyline. Just Dance 2019 is a great way to keep fit and have fun dancing to all the hits at home or with your friends. I'm still playing Mario Rabbids. I love the Rabbids games since way back. 
and the Ubisoft staff was super friendly and great to chat with. We also bumped into Jie Ling, a famous Taiwanese TV host and actress. Here's an awesome sculpt of Leonidas from the just released Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Really well done. Some merch, and Ubisoft, please do sell bigger size shirts for me. Tom Clancy's The Division 2 took a sizable chunk of the booth and was really well put together. With the actors and props, it felt like we were in the action. So the Black Desert Tournament I mentioned earlier finished. The grand prize was 180,000 NT, roughly 5,800 US dollars. Not bad. Please take a moment to like this video, and if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Just walking around the show floor a bit, saw these cow toys which were pretty cute. And who doesn't love cat girls? Over by the fairly large Bandai Namco booth, there were lots of games and a main stage too. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown had several displays running. And gameplay looked fun. There's also a VR side to this game, but I gotta wonder if doing barrel rolls will cause you to lose your lunch. Graphics look good and pretty smooth. One of the Bandai Namco booth girls was really happy we dropped by. Above the area by the main stage, there was this super cool Pac-Man neon accent, retro and we thought, also pretty well done. They have a Dragon Ball manga inspired box art piece, tying in with their Project Z and World Mission titles. And God Eater 3 had a huge monster model on display to promote the game, out now for PlayStation 4 and PC. Here's the PS4 version and makes fighting big monsters look really fun. There's dodging and some actual strategy required to fighting too. Now I thought that that guy was pretty big. But then I saw what this guy is fighting. The game is smart and phases out objects and monsters so you can see what you're doing, especially important during online multiplayer gameplay. As the camera backs out you can really see the full size of this thing. That's impressive. Taiko no Tatsujin Drum Session is already released for PlayStation 4, but the news here is that it's coming out for the Nintendo Switch, with the controllers a natural match for the rhythm-based gameplay. With the helpers at Bandai Namco handing out flyers and posing for attendees, let's move on to more of TGS 2019. Nintendo actually made an appearance along with Psy Games by way of the Dragalia Lost booth. It's an Android and iOS game that seems pretty fun, and you can still enjoy it doing just free to play, which is nice. Magia Record is an Android iOS RPG game that's a mix up between old school Final Fantasy style battle with magical girls. It's only in Japanese, but actually it's not hard to navigate, and there's English help on Reddit. Here's a Japanese bath or onsen billboard for Fate Grand Order by Type Moon, which is advertising their upcoming new chapter, Epic of Remnant another mobile game for Apple and Android devices, and it's a turn-based side-view RPG. There were a few people in costume at TGS, and this guy was pretty funny. Next we head over to the Oris booth by Gigabyte. The outside stage had a host talking about products and doing giveaways, and they are showing off their latest hardware. Really nice accents there on the gaming monitors. Some staff were showing off games, and the Oris RTX 2080 shows off its edge-lit fan blade effects. Pretty cool. Last we have this nice ring LED case with RTX inside. Would you want this for your next rig? Leave a comment. Over at the HyperX booth, they're discussing their latest keyboard lineup, and we're actually doing our own HyperX Cloud Stinger giveaway right now until the end of the month. Check the description to enter. The Cloud Singer is great for PC as well as Xbox and PS4 too, with its 3.5mm plug. Here's the lineup of HyperX headsets, and here's their PS4 headset along with their Charge Play Duo, a quick charge for two PS4 controllers in two hours via the external port. 
the Alloy Core RGB takes center stage, and it should, a great gaming keyboard at just 50 bucks US. Does anyone want to see a review? At the back of the HyperX booth, there's a game show style, grab for cash, but instead you could redeem the gift certificates they had inside on HyperX products. Intel had a booth shaped in the style of their iconic i9 soccer ball and some gameplay going on behind it. Inside the ball was very blue and I was surprised this footage turned out okay. Battlefield 5 and Call of Duty, I think, were on display here. Check out those twinkling i9 soccer balls on top of the Cooler Master cases. We gotta be close to MSI's booth when you see those red dragons. MSI was showing off their latest gaming laptops, featuring per-key RGB, improved coolers, sound, longer battery life, really large touchpads, and more. And of course, their graphics cards, the RTX 2060 Gaming Z, 2080X Trio, and the 2080 TIE Lightning. And there was a large assortment of peripherals, as well as MSI merch. If you like cards with gold accents, maybe this 2080 TIE Lightning Z will be your thing. Tower of Saviors is up next. This game is really huge in Taiwan and other parts of Asia. I always see people playing it on the bus or at cafes. It's kind of a retro D&D cavern monster battles via puzzles. Cooler Master's booth was stocked with lots of goodies, from their lineup of keyboards, power supplies, and headphones, to their Master Liquid RGB 2040 and 360 mil AIO water cooling units, and RGB case fans too. You could also try on and test out their headphones, with a white variant which looks slick and stylish. Here's a custom Battlegrounds themed PC, it's sitting empty but still looking pretty good as this one took corner stage. I really appreciate the plate style design and composition. It's really unique. Check out that top raised panel too. It kind of makes me think of uh, apple seed anime. Inside, the side mounted GPU and subtle RGB presentation. Not too overboard with the LEDs either. Clean. This isn't League, right? It's not WoW. Uh, anyone? Wait, uh, I know it's Dota 2. Man, I wish I had more time for gaming. Thermaltake was the last booth that we were able to hit at TGS 2019. They were actually closing when we arrived and turned rigs back on for us to film. Thank you so much guys. Thermaltake is awesome. Here's the X1 and level 20 RGB gaming keyboards. And a whole selection of Thermaltake mice, all on at sale prices for the convention. The RGB edged model is called the Iris, and I want to check this out for a review. What do you guys think? And some headsets headphone stands, and more keyboards. This case, wow, that looks so trip. Really unique design and execution, and a really polished finish. It cycled to all white LEDs here. Looks like a reactor from a DeLorean or something. These two builds in the level 20 XT cube cases have tons of custom work, including machine cut tops and poly with fans and RGB everywhere, wow. This first one has an infinity mirror front with brand logos etched, and as we go to the side, we can see the custom water-cooled loops and separate pumps. We'll leave you with a few more amazing case designs courtesy of Thermaltake as we close out this episode. So, what did you think of the Taipei Game Show 2019? What do you want us to focus more on when we do game shows? We'd love to hear your suggestions for our next convention coverages. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, or tell us how we could improve for next time. And to see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content, and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we try to respond to most, so if you have a question or if we miss something, please do tell us down below, and let us know what you'd like to see next. We really appreciate you watching this far, thanks for your time, and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.